Okay, thank you. And uh, good evening. Thanks for joining us uh, tonight to learn a little bit more about acupuncture. I'm really excited to be bringing this service to Humane Society. And uh, tonight I want to share a presentation with you that will hopefully help you learn a little bit more about the acupuncture, the benefits that we see with, with animals and sort of what um, a typical appointment uh, looks like for animals who are undergoing acupuncture. Uh, if, you, if you have a, uh, a question while I'm giving the presentation, feel free to, uh, to go ahead and ask, or you can wait to the end. We will have time at the end to ask questions and uh, address any, um, any comments or, or things that have come up during the presentation. And so to, to get started, I, I would like to just give you a, a definition of, of acupuncture, a good place to start. And um, acupuncture is, um, is simply the, the placement of, of needles through the skin into the body in order to, um, to stimulate a healing effect. And uh, to kind of give you a little bit of my, my background, I, I studied at the Chi Institute in Florida, and this is one of, of three places in the US where a veterinarian can be trained and certified in veterinary acupuncture. Uh, and not only do they teach acupuncture, but they also teach some of the other foundations of what is considered traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. And um, although we will focus on acupuncture this evening, um, other, other areas um, that fall under that category of TCVM are Chinese herbal medicine, food therapy, and also a practice known as Tui Na, which is sort of a cross between uh, chiropractic and massage. And, and so we'll, we'll focus on acupuncture, even though we do prescribe Chinese herbal medicines here in, in addition to doing acupuncture. Uh, just to give you a little, little bit of historical background on acupuncture, um, it's interesting um, to look back over history and see how long the acupuncture has, has been studied and practiced. And so human acupuncture has been practiced in China for over 8,000 years. And, um, and from that, the human um, acupuncture led to veterinary acupuncture, which has been in practice for almost 3,000 years. And, uh, and this was mostly on agriculturally important animals, uh, such as horses, pigs, uh, dogs, chickens. Uh, that's where veterinary acupuncture got its start. And, and mostly um, they started by using human points, transpositioning those to animals, and then modifying those points based on observation. Uh, the couple of pictures that you can see on the screen are a couple of early veterinary acupuncturists. Um, on the left was Zhao Fu, who practiced um, uh, in the 900 BCs and had many, many students. Uh, and um, Bo Lei is another practitioner who practiced about 300 years later and uh, was the author of a veterinary acupuncture textbook, which is still in use today. So quite a rich history of, uh, of it with veterinary acupuncture. Uh, this is um, a modern day version of the veterinary acupuncturist. This is Dr. Shea, who is one of the professors and the founder of the Chi Institute. And, uh, and he has really uh, continued to push the limits of veterinary acupuncture, insisting that we, we should do research um, to find out how and why, not just practice uh, veterinary acupuncture, but to understand it and, um, and to continue uh, pushing the limits of what it can do for, for animals. Uh, one of his, his quotes is, um, it, it matters not whether it's ancient or modern, uh, it only matters that it produces a result. And acupuncture certainly does that. I also wanna share with you, uh, just kind of looking at, um, at how acupuncture is, is perceived and things that we're able to, to do to understand it better. This is a, um, from the Wall Street Journal, an article that appeared in uh, 2010 I'm not going to read it to you, but just to share that the opening line tells you a, a little bit uh, about how acupuncture has been, been viewed and uh, it says acupuncture has long baffled the medical experts. And I think that's true um, that it holds it. There is an invisible life force called chi traveling up and down the body. 
And uh, it's used to treat everything from arthritis and asthma to anxiety, acne, and infertility. And it sounds really kind of fantastical, um, but as fanciful as it seems, the article goes on, um, acupuncture is shown uh, to have real effects on the human body. And now that we have access to things like neuroimaging, Doppler ultrasound, thermal imaging, we can really see how that works. So the acupuncture points that have been used for all these thousands of years, uh, it turns out they correspond to nerve bundles, muscle trigger points, uh, and uh, some arteries and major nerve, uh, nerve areas. And so we're understanding more and more, not just that it works, but how that actually works, because it's certainly not intuitive uh, that putting needles in a body would have an effect um, to, to help cure disease or to relieve pain does not make sense to most of us. I wanna give you a veterinary example as well. Uh, we talk a lot about human acupuncture, but we're all concerned with our four-legged friends. And this is an example from the Journal of the American Veterinary Medical Association. Uh, just a, a kind of a quick overview of the study that they did uh, using uh, 40 dogs that have disc disease and uh, what we would consider kind of a slip disc in, in lay terms. And these dogs had various neurologic signs, all of them severe, ranging from um, having no sensation in the back legs, meaning no mobility, to having intense pain in their, in their back legs. The, each um, of the participants in the study were measured for pain and mobility on a scale, an objective scale, before and after treatment. And the treatments were, um, were there were three different treatment groups. One was surgical, uh, one was acupuncture only, and one of the groups combined surgery and acupuncture. Um, I'm going to show you a graph that sort of highlights the findings of that study. And uh, in, the, in the surgery group, we can see there's a, a pain and mobility scale that goes up to seven, with seven being the most severely affected. The surgery group dropped from six down to five, um, which is a lot of relief for these patients. The acupuncture group, which started just over five, uh, 5.2, dropped down to just above two. So quite a bit of difference, so more mobility, less pain. And, and then the surgery with acupuncture group did really well, uh, dropping from a six on the severity scale uh, down to below two, uh, which kind of shows how acupuncture alone is great. Surgery alone is great. Uh, when we integrate the, the two types of medicine, we can get so much benefit uh, for these patients. I want to just talk a little bit about not just the purpose of acupuncture, but sort of the, um, the philosophy behind it and how, how we view patients and how acupuncture works. Um, the, the overall purpose of acupuncture is to restore balance and wholeness uh, to the body. This can be used alone as we talked about or with conventional medicine or Western medicine. And uh, there are a couple of foundations of traditional veterinary medicine. And, um, and these are yin and yang, or it's in popular culture, yin and yang. Um, and the other foundation is qi and the movement of qi. And I'm going to touch on each of those because they're, they're a little bit of a foreign concept for, for many people. Uh, when we talk about yin and yang, um, this, is, this represents a balance of, of opposites in the body. Uh, when we have balance, there is health. When there's imbalance, we have disease. Um, examples in the body are uh, rest and activity. So two opposites that must be in balance. Uh, flexing and extending, the storage of various things and the transport of those things, um, up versus down, hot versus cold. Uh, these are some of the opposites that we look at um, with, uh, with acupuncture. And examples of those with um, when a body wants to rest and it's unable to, and we get activity when the body is trying to rest, we can have things like seizures or tremors. 
Uh, another example would be like with up and down uh, food when it is taken in and swallowed, it should continue downward and the journey should continue down. But with an example like vomiting, um, the, the food is going upward. It's, uh, it's an imbalance and, and so it's an unhealthy body. Uh, the other foundational piece is chi, and um, and chi is a little harder to wrap your mind around, uh, but it's considered the the vital energy that's flowing through the body, takes on many forms, many purposes in the body, and if there's a shortage of that of that vital energy or a blockage of that, then we have disease or pain. And another way to to kind of think about chi is like this uh, that blood, we, we can easily um, follow the concept of blood flowing through arteries and veins, uh, which would have been a foreign concept you know, 8,000 years ago, um, but we understand it very well now. Same with electricity flowing through the body, flowing through neurons and nerves, um, and allowing us to sense and move. Um, chi is just another force that moves in the body through meridians and along points in the body, acupuncture points. And, and touching on that, on the meridians and, and points, uh, which is, is sort of the, the keystone piece of, of acupuncture, uh, we can kind of think of meridians like being highways on the body. And, uh, and these highways ideally have a smooth traffic flow. So if we think of um, a map, and we know there's a start and there's a finish to these highways. We know exactly where they move and how traffic should move along those. That is like meridians on the body. Uh, the acupuncture points are more like cities. They are known stops along the way um, with a longitude and a latitude. They're in very, very specific locations. And those are the areas we access with acupuncture needles. And, and this is a bit of an exaggeration, but I think it makes a point um, that this animal um, encountered a, a porcupine and, um, and has many, many needles in the body, but um, probably none of those are in an acupuncture point that is going to help him. So they have to be very specific. Um, and, and just a few needles in the right place, it can make a big difference in, in comfort and disease control. This is a um, kind of a, a roadmap of a, of a dog's body. This is just showing a few of the meridians that we, that we use. So the lines represent those highways, those meridians that, that chi or energy flow along. And each of the circles represents an acupuncture point or sort of the cities along the way. There are um, nearly 400 points on, on animals. We use about 150 of those very commonly. And each of those points, um, targets a specific organ and a function. And, um, and so with very few points, we can, we can achieve a, a difference and, um, and for the health of the animal. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how we, how we use acupuncture, how we uh, make animals feel, feel better and address their, their disease. In 2003, the World Health Organization listed 28 symptoms and diseases that the research had shown scientific proof confirming that acupuncture is beneficial. And, um, and I want to tell you a little bit about the different disease processes that, that we treat commonly with acupuncture. Probably the number one thing that we treat is pain. Uh, and so pain is common. We have many medications that can help treat pain. Um, but acupuncture along with medication or by itself can, can be really powerful in helping animals uh, have a good quality of life. And nerve malfunction or injury is another uh, common use for acupuncture. Uh, any type of GI issue such as vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, any of those can benefit from, from acupuncture and also Chinese herbal medication. Um, seizures, uh, sometimes we can reduce the, the medication amounts uh, that we're using to help animals um, who are seizuring. 
uh, animals who are paralyzed or have paresis or partial paralysis can benefit from, from acupuncture, much like the study that I was telling you about, uh, that uh, when animals are, are not very mobile, we can really help them a lot with, with acupuncture. Uh, coughing from any, um, from a variety of causes, whether it's infectious or heart related, can benefit from acupuncture. Uh, liver and kidney disease, uh, both very common findings in companion animals, uh, can benefit. And, and in fact, in, in conventional medicine, we have no way of reversing kidney disease to any extent. We just manage uh, symptoms and, uh, and try to slow down the disease progression. With acupuncture, we can actually roll back the clock a little bit with, with kidney disease and, um, and have them in, improve uh, with their kidney values. So that's a really exciting um, part of acupuncture. Urinary incontinence. Um, right now, uh, most, most animals are controlled with medication. We can either replace or reduce medication with the use of acupuncture. Uh, cancer patients uh, benefit um, for many reasons with, with acupuncture. Uh, it can help with um, nausea associated with chemotherapy. It can keep their appetite um, good. It can help them with pain related to cancer. So many benefits there. Uh, itching, such so as seasonal allergy itching can, can also um, be reduced quite a bit with acupuncture. And there are a myriad of eye and ear conditions that, that can be helped as well. And heart disease, um, especially animals that do not tolerate the medications well or have some type of comorbidity where they maybe can't take one of the medications that we would prescribe can benefit um, from, from acupuncture as well. Um, the way that uh, treatment with acupuncture works, um, you know, we, um, we evaluate the animal, make some decisions about how to treat, and then we know that acupuncture is cumulative. And so you know, one treatment with acupuncture, while it can be beneficial by itself, is not going to uh, reverse disease or keep an animal pain-free. Uh, so what we, we generally do is an initial consultation we assess the condition of the animal. We get a history, what is currently being done for the animal with conventional medication. And we also look um, somewhat at personality or constitution type, which is a little bit different than conventional medicine. We find that certain personality types respond better or worse to, uh, to acupuncture. So we take that into consideration too. And then we do a traditional Chinese veterinary medical exam, which looks a little bit different uh, than, than what you're accustomed to seeing uh, done with conventional, with conventional medicine. And we make um, a diagnosis, a pattern diagnosis. So it, um, it's very different than what you would have as a diagnosis um, with Western med medicine, uh, rather than saying an animal has arthritis, they may have something like kidney yin deficiency uh, with localized stagnation of chi. And so it, it sounds different, it is different, um, but with just a pattern diagnosis, we're able to then treat. So whether we have lab work or x-rays, those things are beneficial, but it does not keep us from treating uh, the animal if we don't have those things. Uh, Follow-up is, is very individualized uh, based on the, on the patient's response to acupuncture and also based on the condition that they have. So the frequency with which we do that depends, depends a lot on their condition. Um, it would be uh, pretty typical to do three to four treatments in the first month uh, with most conditions. Um, and then perhaps settling to one to two treatments per month. And then some, uh, some conditions we can go very infrequently. Um, for instance, seasonal allergies, sometimes every three to six months for maintenance or ear issues. Um, it, and so it really does depend on the, on the patient and what they're presenting with. Now, one question I get asked a lot is, uh, will my animal actually tolerate acupuncture? Will they sit still while someone puts little needles in them? And, and so far, I've not met a patient that won't allow some acupuncture. Um, some of them will tell us that uh, you're pushing it too far, or I don't like needles in my, in my leg, only on my back. Um, but uh, in general, animals tolerate it really well. And, um, and part of the reason is the needles are very, very tiny. So they're hair thin, 
uh, which is very helpful. And, um, and we also combine that. We can use fewer needles and use things like electroacupuncture, where we're um, using electrodes um, on the needles that we've placed in order to, to generate a mild current to help um, to help with the acupuncture, have it last longer and have a more profound effect. And, um, and most animals find it very soothing. Many times they fall asleep while they're having electroacupuncture done. And afterwards they feel really good, almost like they'd had a, um, a deep muscle massage and they're, they're very sleepy and very content. Um, we also use aquapuncture um, and we can use fewer needles again by using aquapuncture. And this is where we inject uh, fluid into the point and that can be either vitamin B12 or sterile saline and it just helps the points um, be stimulated longer so that we get um, a medical effect. We also use something called moxibustion, uh, where we're, we are using um, an herbal stick to warm the acupuncture point or the needle that's in an acupuncture point. And that can be very beneficial for some patients. And finally, we can also use laser stimulation. So we place the needle and then use cold laser therapy in order to drive um, the effect uh, longer and stronger. And so to, to kind of wrap up what I have to present to you tonight, uh, I wanna show you some of the acupuncture patients that we have treated at Humane Society. Um, and um, I just have a, a few to share some of our, our fan favorites here um, who have benefited from acupuncture. Uh, this is Wendy and, um, and she is one of those cats that lets us know exactly what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. Um, she is a cancer patient um, who has been receiving acupuncture for about eight months and, um, and is helping with appetite and energy and nausea associated with the chemotherapy that she's receiving. And our goal with her was to get her doing zoomies again around the house. And she has started doing that um, over the last couple of months. And so she feels good um, and she's tolerating her treatments well. Now, this is Spike, uh, who is, has been treated for about 10 months now um, for, uh, for arthritis and other lameness issues, as well as seizures and diarrhea. So he has, he has quite a few small problems and, um, and has tolerated uh, treatment well, has done very well for us. And this is Caesar, um, who had um, received treatments for quite a while. Uh, for a degenerative uh, neuromuscular disorder. And uh, our goal with him was to get him to his 13th birthday, which he, he got to his 13th birthday and then went many months beyond and uh, just kept him uh, comfortable and, and mobile. That was our goal with him. And, and then this is Wesley, um, who was um, a very special dog to everyone here at the Humane Society. Um, he came in with a, with an injury. You can see that he looks, you know, quite sad, and um, and he received quite a few acupuncture treatments. Um, and I think this uh, this picture really shows how tolerant animals are. He's a four month old puppy in these pictures, and he's falling asleep while he's getting electroacupuncture. Um, he's very very comfortable. And, um, and I want to, uh, to finish off, I want to show you a very, uh, very short video that was, um, was put together last week for our uh, walk, wag, uh, walk and Wag event. Um, and uh, it tells Wesley's story better than I can tell it. Um, and so this is about a, a two, two minute video that I'd like to, to finish up with.
That is his Wesley story gets to me every time. And so uh, to con conclude this, um, this part of the presentation, I uh, just want to tell you acupuncture is exciting. Um, we're, we're all very excited about offering this here. Um, it's a very well tolerated method uh, to reach a, a state of balance, to reach a state of health. And it's evidence-based medicine. It doesn't replace what we do in the outpatient clinic um, as far as conventional medicine, but it complements it very well. And I'm happy to take any, any questions that you, you may have at this time. I'll turn off the presentation. Any any questions that occur to you? Um, actually, <clears throat> Dr. J, I do have a question. Sure. Um, I mean, I know you've been out to my house to to do the house uh, the visit with my cats, but um, would something like megacolon be able to be something that would be um, that acupuncture could help with, or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a protocol for that, uh, and uh, we see that you know with or without medicine, um, we can we see benefit to that. Um, it usually takes some time. Uh, we see it taking a, a month or more to, to really reverse some of the, the issues that you see with megacolon. Uh, but I'd be happy to, to see one of your kitties and, <laughs> and, uh, and try that out. Yeah. And then just, um, I mean, I know that, I know how difficult it is, how backed up you guys are for, you know, regular visits. Is something like this also that backlogged? Uh, actually, we are open to acupuncture. We have um, some time set aside for just acupuncture. So okay. um, I think a little little easier to get in for that. Okay. Okay. And, and we also do it at home, too. So we okay. Okay. house call acupuncture, too. Okay. Good to know. So if no one else has, has questions, I, I think we'll, we'll end here. We appreciate uh, you stopping by and, um, and learning a bit about acupuncture. If questions occur to you later, if you want to give us a call, we'd be happy to talk with you more about that. Have a good, good, good evening and thank you.